行きます。Hey guys, welcome back to Seven One's channel. Today we are building the MG Zendrok Kai and the Swords version. No matter TV or manga, I always thought that the Heavy Arms and Zendrok were pretty sad. While the other three Gundams got obvious changes, the Heavy Arms and Zendrok seems like no changes at all. If you're not paying some close attention, even for the EW version, it's just color changes and not very obvious. So the setting itself already told us that it was meant to be a premium Bandai because of the reasons above. Despite the Zendrog didn't perform much in the OVA, but it looked very cool in the OVA, and I can remember that perfect X cutting during its first launch. For the box art, Bandai was pretty smart and chose the launching scene from the OVA. Personally, I already know that the Zendrog won't have a lot of changes compared to the regular release, but let's open the bags and look at the runners. The cover of the menu looks amazing, and you can see the launching scene in front of you. I wish every MGP band I can have a full cover on the menu like this. It looks way better than just a picture in a rectangle. For the new runners, three of them, which are K runner for the new parts, L1 and L2 runner for the cloak. You will also see some different colored runners, but it's not as terrible as the gym dominance from last week's review. Other than those changes, you won't see anything else, and you're basically buying a deluxe version of the regular release MG Zendrok. Okay, I hope it's not too bad, and see you in the review. Hey guys, welcome back to the Zendro Kai review. So this is the finishing of it. At the moment, you can see some clear changes because it only looked like a recolor version of the Zendro. 
If we switch the angle and think differently, it's more like buying a cloak and sandrock as a gift. If we only focused on the changes, then I'll probably tell you it's worthless. Because as I said, the changes are very hard to spot, except the colors. Well, let us start the trip and take a closer look. First, we need to take a look at the leftovers. 5 runners with 20 pieces left is way better than the gym dominance or Hyakushiki crash. The leftovers were mostly joints, chest and waist parts. Since some of them were different colored parts, you can think about switching the colors on the body to sort of creating a mini customization. As for the EW version today, compared to the TV version, it looked more exaggerated and the design concept was leaning more towards the traditional Roman armor set. Especially the head and shoulders, you can see the rooster crest on the top of the head, the shoulders contain multiple layers of armor. But when you look at the upper body design and compared to the lower body, you will find out that the design looks a bit incompatible. The upper body got all kinds of customizations and the bottom seems a bit too boring and bland. For the overall design, the EW version definitely looks better. But I still prefer the TV version because it looked more realistic to me. As for the head of the Sandrock Kai, it looked way better on MG because the XGAC version got a big gap between the neck and the chin. However, MG fixed this problem and successfully balanced the scale. The only small upset that I found is the stickers on the side of the head. I wished it was a separate part instead. As for now, the stickers are not doing too good and I believe that with a couple times of turning, it will have a chance to flip out. As for the articulations, up and down is very easy to do so. Side to side is limited because of the chest piece and the helmet size. The chest appearance is pretty nice, not too fancy and the colors were just there. Just like all the MG, simply pull down the hatch and you will see Kataloo sitting in there. But the depth is quite deep and it's not easy to see the figure. Unfortunately, the MG Triple XG frame is universal which means the center is just a big ball joint. No side to side or front and back joints. All you can do is a simple 45 turn. The shoulders were better than the TV version in my opinion. Larger and the layers were designed better. A total of 4 colors on the shoulders but it didn't destroy the visual experience and mixed very well. The shoulders can move separately but the range is pretty poor. There is another piece to open, this is for you to equip the cloak later. As for the articulations, an easy 360 turn, lifting is 90 because of the shoulder size. The whole arm can move to the front, the rotation is very nice and smooth. Another armor piece is on the side and it will move when you lift the arms and the bending is slightly above 90 degrees. The hands are once again the famously no swappable hands. You can swap to open hands, weapon holding hands or normal holding hands. The waist is from the universal runners which means the problems that I mentioned before in the MG Triple XG review is still got the same problems. The front skirt is great, the layers were nicely cut. You can lift to close to 90 degrees and turn to the side. The side skirt got a sticker on it, but just like the head, it's not reliable and avoid touching too much. The side skirt can lift around 45 but it's still loose. At the middle of the back waist, this is the spot for you to store the beam machine gun. The back skirt got separate movement. Each skirt can lift close to 90 degrees. The legs design is pretty boring, so let's focus on the articulations instead. Kicking to the front is standard 90, side kick is below 90, back kick is around 45. The bending is a perfect U shape, but the sand drop in the frame got a hollow part in the frame which resulted the bending looks a bit weird. The feet are standard ball joints which can do some small front and back actions, a bit of side to side movement and some turning too. The tip of the feet can move a bit, but it's quite tight so be careful. Compared to the TV version, the backpack got more things for the EW version. It doesn't look that boring and at least there are some racks on it. Other than the racks, the backpack got 4 thrusters. I would suggest some additional painting for the thrusters. The racks can slightly adjust and pull up and down. As for the accessories, coming up first is the shield. This shield doesn't look that different compared to the TV version. You can still see the snake's eyes and teeth on the shield. Unfortunately, you don't have the stickers for the snake's eyes and you need to paint it to red. The only movable part on the shield is the snake's teeth. You can pull it out and move down. To equip the shield, simply connect it onto the forearms and done. The next weapon is the beam machine gun. The appearance looks very similar to UZI. The movable part Parts include the handle and the tail. 
other than those parts, this UZI don't have a lot of things to introduce. To store on the gampler, fold the tail in and move the handle in. Then, you have two options. You can either store it on the back waist or at the side of the shield. The last weapon is the Heat Sotos. Compared to the TV version, they are bigger and shaped better. But the color injection looks hideous. I really can't tolerate it and respray it to metallic silver. I always got a question in my mind. The Sotos curves don't look like it's suitable for cutting, so how did the Sandra cut the serpents like it was a piece of paper? The Sotos can combine from the end and form a double-edged Soto, but this seems a bit weird. To store the Sotos on the backpack, fold the handle to the other way and move the racks up. Let the handle go through the rack and push the connector into the backpack. Other than storing on the backpack, you can also combine it with the shield to form the cross crusher. First, reposition the shield connector. Then, connect the Sotos onto the back of the shield. There is a small gear in the shield, which allow you to open and close the crusher. Okay, you've waited for a long time to see this cloak. Let's quickly assemble it onto the Sandra Kai. First, remove the head, chest pieces, and backpack. Then, put the front cloak into the chest pieces spot. Next, slide the shoulders open. Push the cloak in carefully. But this part is actually quite hard to find the correct spot, so take your time. Lastly, plug the back cloak in and the backpack in too. Okay, so this is what it looks like after you completely equip the cloak. There are some movements to help you move the arms out of the cloak, but honestly, not helping too much. The biggest problem after you equip the cloak is that you can't see the Sandra's legs and it's not easy to make sure it stands well. Let's do a quick commentary for the appearance. Different than Supernova's version, the Bandai version gave you fixed plastic. Personally, I hate to use actual cloth, because it looks really weird and the connection will probably end up like the XGUZ crossbones. The surface got a lot of wrinkles, which is an attempt to create a realistic feeling. It's not too bad, but I think you must do some weathering to show the full image. Overall, the plastic decision is correct and definitely better than a piece of cloth. Alright, this is the end of the review. Speaking of the changes, it's very limited and if you're someone looking for some obvious or massive changes, this Gunpla won't fit your taste. If we focus on the selling point, I think it's more on the nostalgia. For someone like myself that watched the Gundam Wing as one of my earliest Gundam series, I had no resistance for any Gunpla from Gundam Wing. Even though the Sandra Kai is worthless if you only look at the changes. But for people who got Gundam Wing in their childhood, it's a must buy in the list. We got the MG5s now, when can I see a full XGAC Atlas Watts set? What are your thoughts on this MG Sandra Kai? Comment down below and tell me more about it. Like this video, subscribe and hit the bell next to it to see more. Follow my IG at Sephaphonics. Donation link is in the description and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.